Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to talk about, oh, the best rare champion in the game, no big deal, tied with Cold Heart, two-way tie, in my opinion at least, and that is Reliquary Tender. Now you guys know I love this champion. I did a guide on her about a year ago now, so it's time for an updated version because this champion has really skyrocketed in terms of value. She's always been good, but now in Doom Tower where there are so many debuffers to contend with, not just the bosses but also the waves. She is so, so important to invest in. If you get your hands on this Void Rare Champion, definitely invest. She is really second to none in terms of rare support. Heck, even in terms of epic support. She's really on par with an epic or legendary champion in terms of the, the value that she can add to your team. Today, we're going to demonstrate that. But first, let's take a look at the champion. So, Relic Retender. Where are you? Uh, there's a few ways to build. Well, she's easy to build-ish. We'll talk about why in a second. Uh, looking at the skills here, Warden Staff, the A1, does have the weak version of decrease attack. That's nice to have, especially against bosses, if you don't have another decrease attack on the team. However, it's the only ability in her kit that is predicated on having accuracy. So are you going to build up accuracy only for this weak version of decrease attack? Well, that's a decision that each of you are going to have to make make for yourselves. Are you having trouble surviving? Are you getting one-shotted by the boss every time? Well, then maybe add some accuracy onto your Reliquary Tender. Today, we're going to go ahead and thread the needle and try to build up a, enough accuracy to land this, uh, but not really focus it on, on our, as our main stat. Uh, on Tender's Watch, this is the ability that everybody talks about when you talk about Reliquary Tender. Now, there's two books required to get this down to a three-turn, but those books are mandatory on this champion. Obviously, you can use them with, use her without, excuse me, but it's, it's so important important that you guys book her up. Removes all debuffs from all allies and then place a 15% continuous heal buff on them for two turns. So, I mean, continuous heal on a three turn cooldown, the big version of continuous heal, not the 7.5, is fantastic. It does a ton of healing, as you will see in today's video. But even more than that, removing all debuffs on a three turn cooldown is so valuable to have, especially in a rare champion, but really in any champion. We're talking like Bad Alcazar, uh, Hackorn Smash Lord. There's not that many champions. A lot of them are more than three turn cooldowns, and those are two legendary champions. Raglan's on a four turn cooldown. Uh, we have of, uh, Spirit Host, I believe, is on a four turn cooldown, five turn cooldown. That's the only other rare champion that I believe that has this ability, but nothing like Tender's Watch. It's so, so, so uh, key in terms of a, an ability in this game. Forget rare, just overall, it's, it's tremendous. And then Call to Life, she also has a revival in her kit, which is just absolutely great. I mean, if things don't go right, you have a reviver, right? If you run her with Sil the Drakes on the same team, you have two revivers on the team. That way you can really make up for kind of RNG errors where, hey, you get one-shotted uh, when things don't go right. It doesn't matter. You can pick them right back up. So having that reviver with that insane A2 uh, with, you know, the, the weak version of decrease attack on the A1 is it makes this champion just tremendous. In terms of masteries on this champion, we went with offense and support tree here. These are the original masteries that I had on this champ. So let's go ahead and review them. First of all, having lasting gifts on any champion with continuous heal is fantastic. It's a fantastic option because it can extend the duration of a continuous heal, which provides an insane amount of healing uh, and, you know, 30% chance to extend the duration of every single one of those continuous heals that lands on all allies. A great ability to have on any continuous heal champion. We also went with the lore of steel which we only really have it for one speed set on this champion so you could argue it's probably not the best choice we did pick up spirit haste to go ahead and move along to the lasting gifts and otherwise we just came down we picked up a little bit of accuracy because we do want again that a, that uh, decrease attack to land on this build however you could easily make the case you just go steadfast with this champion and go down uh kind of the left side of the tree as well uh for offense we did go with tier six war master on this champion uh, she can put out a lot of damage on these longer fights, especially, which we're going to highlight why longer fights are actually like a pretty cool option for this champion in today's video. Uh, excuse me, War Master synergy with longer fights are a great option. She'll put out a lot of damage. You guys will see just on the War Master procs alone on her A1, she's going to be putting out more damage than you'd probably expect from this champion, a rare support champion. So War Master, I think, is a great choice if you can keep her alive. Now, if she is dying, you have so many different options. If you just want to build on support here, even Master Masteries, masteries alone on this champion. Really, the possibilities here are, are you know, endless. Forgive the cliche, right? But you can go down 
You can pick up, uh, you can pick up uh, timely intervention. It increases the champion's turn meter by twenty percent whenever an ally hero drops below twenty five percent HP. I think that would be my second choice is timely intervention on this champion. Uh, this is predicated on debuffs. You don't want the oppressor. She only has one debuff in her kit. I think those would be your two choices, uh, either War Master or uh, timely intervention, depending on if you need support or depending on if you need uh, uh, extra damage. Right? If you're if you're not dying, if you're if you're good, then go uh, go. With Warmaster. If you are dying, then I would probably advise you to go with Timely Intervention. So, in terms of artifacts on this champion, right? So, Relentless, right? I put my Apothecary and my Reliquary Tender in Relentless gear that you can get from events, from winning an event. So what I would advise you guys do is, is try to get your uh, Reliquary Tender in Relentless gear. It's made a huge impact to me, for me, having her in Relentless, uh, even more than Reflex gear. I think that Relentless on really good support champions like this is a tremendous artifact set. Uh, I switched about eh, six months ago or so on both these champions, and I gotta say, I wish I had done it sooner. Tremendous, because basically, an 18% chance to grant an extra turn, help cycle all their abilities, and then you refresh the cooldown on the revive in case you need it again, but most importantly, you refresh the cooldown on that incredible A2, landing more continuous heals and stripping away any debuffs that were landed in the one, two turns uh, between. Uh, so Relentless is tremendous, even cycling more A1s, procs more war, war masters, and so on and so forth. I think Relentless is fantastic. However, totally recognize that you guys might not all have access to Relentless gear. The good news is she's an easy champion to build so you don't have to have like exactly the right relentless pieces the most important piece i would say is probably defense on the chest or hp on the chest you guys have the option there so defense or hp if we look at her base stats here we have a really healthy amount of speed at 103 we have defense all right at 958 and hp you know a little bit above average for rare at 18,000. it's easy to scale it's relatively easy to scale these uh these base stats so my approach to building her is simple stack up as much defense as we can and we're really aiming for 3k defense for kind of end game content, uh, talking Doom Tower bosses, etc. Uh, but you know, even a little bit below that is fine if you pick uh, HP uh, in its place. Now, I do want to talk about the uh, gauntlets. So you'll see I have legendary gauntlets. I only had uh, legendary speed gear available to, to use for this video. So I purposely only upgraded to level uh, 12 just to show you guys that it doesn't really, it's okay if it's not totally maxed. Uh, and I didn't glyph it out either. So so uh, you can go HP, defense, HP or defense on the gauntlets, or if she's staying alive, and I didn't do it for today's video because I just didn't want to build her like in a god tier build for you guys, uh, but you can put her in crit rate as well, and you'll do even more damage, and that's only, only put her in crit rate gauntlets if if you're over, if you're not in progression mode, right? If you can clear everything, so this is kind of for end game players, you can make that transition on all your support champions, not just Reliquary ch a Tender. Eventually, if your team's not dying, then you might as well maximize the damage output uh, and, uh, you know, try to get those times a little bit lower. Uh, so you can be more efficient with your own time, right? So anyway, uh, tangent over, essentially what we're looking for on this champion in terms of stats, so simple. Number one priority, far and away, speed. So speed boots are obviously going to be a choice for this champion. Uh, speed number one, number one A, speed. You want her going fast, fast, fast. More heals, more cleanses. Really fast uh, on Reliquary Tender. And then after that, there's a little bit of a step down, and you're looking at HP percentage and defense percentage. I prioritize defense a little bit over HP. So in my case, defense and HP. That's it. You do need a little bit of accuracy if you want to land that weak version of attack, as we talked about. But I wouldn't stress yourselves out over it, especially if you can find a decreased attack in another champion on your team. I wouldn't worry at all about accuracy if I had that opportunity to, to kind of pair with a decreased attack champion. So I put her in defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and attack on the banner. Only reason I want attack isn't because I wanted that attack, it's because I got a triple roll of speed on this banner, and my Relentless gear didn't have a lot of speed on it. So I did get a six on this one. What do I have here? Actually... I was able to find some decent speed, I guess some all right speed, I guess, on my Relentless gear, uh, but I just wanted her faster, right? So uh, getting her as fast as possible is going to be the way to go. 216 speed, we have 3K defense, we have 47K HP, and uh, again, we kind of negated, didn't even worry about uh, crit rate or crit damage on this champion. We have a resistance at 193 and an accuracy at 164. So she looks pretty cool aesthetically. She has a, uh, well, what is that? Anybody know what that is called? <laughs> What is this weapon? Let me zoom out a little bit. Eh, eh. All right. What is, is that, I'm just gonna call it a staff. 
I'm going to call that weapon a staff. So she has a staff. She has kind of this, uh, I don't know, the gold gilted armor or whatever robe. Uh, she's a cool looking champion. I, I'm really a big fan of her aesthetically, especially for a rare champion. It does seem like sometimes uh, rares kind of, and she has the high heels on too, the golden high heels. Not a bad look there. Not a bad look, Reliquary. She's a tremendous champ. Let's go ahead and uh, try her out. Now, guys, if you don't have uh, resistance or, excuse me, relentless gear, go ahead and just put her in speed. Three speed sets are going to be like A-OK. -okay. You're going to be good to go. Let's start out with Ice Golem, and then we'll take a trip into uh, Doom Tower. So Ice Golem, I have a team here of Reliquary Tender, Silva Drakes, uh, Dark Elhane, War Maiden, and we have Archmage Helmet, who hopefully everybody eventually will be able to farm enough secret rooms on normal to unlock. I wanted to give him another spotlight because I'm just such a huge fan of this champion. He is just a tremendous game-changing champion. He's kind of like Silva Drakes. It's going to take a long time to get him because he's not a progression reward champion, but as long as you can get to the point where you can clear one secret room, eventually you'll be able to unlock him. And then pairing like these two champions together... Oof, what an OP tandem, really. Uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, back to the team here. Really solid team. There's no aura selected here. A couple videos, I've already mentioned this in a video, but I'm going to mention it again. I think it's always smart to go with an aura on your team. But what I'm trying to do on these videos is use a select group of champions, right? I have a, a lot of champions on this account, right? I'm a dirty pay-to-win player. So I could use anybody I want to. Uh, but what I try to do is try to do it with, you know, champions who are pretty accessible. And when I look at accessible champions, I don't have a good aura option there, right? Uh, I, I could have ran Apothecary on this team, but I really wanted to run Dark Elhane as my damage dealer. And at the end of the day, I really wanted to showcase uh, Archmage Helmet again. So there was really no way I could get Apothecary in there. Otherwise, I probably would have played him. But either way, guys, I think you'll really enjoy this one. I do have War Maiden on this team. It's a negative affinity uh, matchup here, but it's okay. She'll still gonna be able to land her decreased defense and she's gonna die. She's gonna tank for this team. She's probably gonna die like five times against the ice golem but it's okay because we're always going to survive only she's going to die she's essentially in there in an unorthodox way to tank for the team uh what's so cool about having sill and Arch archmage helmet on the same team here is they both stun so it's like the double stun attack so effective i've never once gotten these terror beasts with these two together to even get their shriek ability off to have to deal with the uh the reflect damage so here we go at the Ice Golem himself, and again, we have, what, two daily login reward champions, uh, we have one Doom Tower champion, we have one farmable rare, and then we have Relic Tender. So Relic Tender is so, uh, I haven't really even been paying attention to Relic Tender, but you can see we have these decreased accuracies, we're going to have Freeze as well, uh, let's see, there's Tender's Watch, and you're going to see how much healing she does uh, at the end of this battle and it's going to be tremendous. You can see she just got an extra turn there. So two abilities, two A1s in a row that cycles to where she's one turn away now from already getting that the next turn she'll already have it off cooldown because all we really need is one relentless proc, right? We don't need uh, 15 uh, <laughs> relentless procs. We only need one to bring that cycle down to get those heals off. So it looks like we're probably going to lose War Maiden here the next time the uh, Ice Golem goes. But we're going to get the heal off now. Boom. And we got an extra turn there. So again, already just against the Ice Golem here, the Relentless Gear really helping us out quite a bit. And so far, so good. Nobody's died. I'm sure we will. Another Relentless proc. See how good Relentless is? It's not about getting extra A1s off. It's about reducing the cooldown of her A2. And if War Maiden was dying like the other runs that we did, uh, well, that I did be in preparation for today's video, you guys would see, there she goes. Usually she was dying when I was doing this like every single time. Uh, still the Drakes picked up the revive that time. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller here so you can see the entire team. Dark Hellhane feeling a little bit left out. My bad. My bad, Dark Hellhane. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can make cheesy dad jokes. And it's not even a dad joke. It's just a bad joke. There we go. Uh, so... <laughs> We'll get the cleanse there. Look at how good she is doing in terms of support reliquary. I mean, just an unbelievable uh, job keeping everybody alive. And if they die, just picking them right back up here. So we had the ice golem uh, low. 
and HP, but so is my team, but it's okay. We're gonna pick her up and then we get another Relentless proc and we get the heals off on everybody. So everybody's gonna be nicely filled uh, up in terms of their HP as well. Dude, this is sick, man. Three and a half minutes on a really, really fun team to kind of showcase. War Maiden didn't do much of anything. Archmage Helmet did a million damage. Dark El Hain did 2.5. Silver Drace did 800,000. Relicry Tender put out 300K in continuous heals. Uh, Silver Drace has that heal on her passive. She had a tremendous uh, six of uh, 465. Uh, what doesn't show up in the stat sheets about Relicry Tender is not the revives. Uh, obviously, they don't show up either, but really the cleanses. Having all those cleanses is so, so crucial to have on a team you put her into a team that was otherwise struggling and immediately it's it's hard not to notice wow this made a just a profound impact so i'm going to start off on dune tower normal i'll go for the highest floor that i have uh, already cleared on normal i did enough floors on normal to un unlock archmage helmet and then i switched over to hard this uh this month so this is a team that I'm also a big fan of. We have Dagger as a uh, decreased defense champion. We have Dark Hellhane again on this team. We have Grush the Mangler, who's just tremendous champion, another daily log and reward champion. He's great for Doom Tower because his damage is based off of defense and he has a leech on his A1. Not to mention he has a uh, decreased attack, as we talked about. He also has continuous heals, so he's going to be helping with the heals as well on his A3. Uh, great champion to invest in, uh, like I said, guys, for Doom Tower. And then we have the same thing. No aura on this team. Nobody actually has an aura that is good in all battles. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll be successful no matter what because we have Relicry, right? Now, Doom Tower is where Relicry Tender really starts to shine. Obviously, in, uh, you know, Ice Golem, in, in every dungeon, every the traditional dungeon in this game, she's tremendous. She's a great champion. But in Doom Tower, not just the waves, but also against the bosses, that is where you guys are just going to absolutely love in, or if you invest in Relicry Tender, you're absolutely going to love her. If you have her in the vault, go take her out, guys. Who should be upgrading this champion? Who should be investing in her? People who definitely people who don't have Bad L, Raglan, Hacker and Smash Lord. There's a few Mausoleum Mage. There's a few others with, the, with uh, you know, debuff strippers. But I'm going to tell you guys, against the Nether Spider, against these bosses in Doom Tower, you oftentimes need two or even three debuff cleansers on your team. I run three of them on my team, one of them actually being Relicry Tender. I run Bad L, Raglan, and Relicry Tender on hard difficulty. I have three cleansers. That way, don't even have to worry about all those poisons uh, and all that damage coming into my champions. So I would say that really anybody who doesn't have at least two cleansers uh, should invest in Relicry Tender. She's that good. Even uh, players who would consider themselves endgame players, I'm going to go ahead and suggest even you guys take a look at Relicry Tender. I think she could help you out. So this is top, this is floor what? Around floor 100, floor 99, I believe. Uh, but you can see this team, a pretty accessible team, able to make it work. What I'm going to do after this match is I'm going to go against the Nether Spider. And I will show you how you can have success with a couple cleansers on your team. We'll see what we can come up with here. Let me let me take a look. I forget if I was uh, doing a hard nether spider when preparing for this video or whether I was doing a, uh, a, 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 a normal version. I think I was just doing this uh, spider, right? Yeah. So floor 90. So what's the deal with this team? We have Grizzled Jarl on the team, and his main purpose on the team is one reason, his A1. Having that heal reduction, and I didn't want to use Cold Heart because I always use Cold Heart. I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging. Granted, having Grizzled Jarl on the team versus Cold Heart on the team is going to A, make him stay alive all the time, whereas Cold Heart might die. Uh, but it's okay because we have a reviver on the team in Relicry Tender. But it, what I want to do is just make things a little bit more challenging. So I have no damage dealers except for Kale on this team, right? So I have Kale as my DPS. I have a Grush again for the Leech. And then I have Draconis for the Shield. And then Yarrow for the heal reduction. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of tick off these, these important debuffs. Uh, Leech being the most important that I'm looking for right now. I, you'll notice I don't even have a decreased defense champion on this team at all. And that's going to make the run go really long. We're looking at around 7 to 10 minutes on this run. 
but it doesn't matter. This is floor 90 of normal, by the way, guys, but this is a fairly accessible team. And if you don't have Jarl, you can sub in Coltar on this team. Uh, but having a shield champion is really crucial, obviously, here. Having a leech champion is great. And having at least one cleanser, ideally two cleansers, is fantastic. So what I'm going to do here is rather than make, wait, make you guys wait 10 minutes... I'm gonna, and she starts out with a relentless proc right away. And eh, not really gonna help us out when she has everything off cooldown, but still nice to have there. So these waves are pretty easy. It's really the spider when we get to, to him or her, her, I guess. She does give birth, I guess, her. Uh, when we get to the spider, that's when things are gonna get tricky, right? And I'm sure a lot of you guys are struggling against these bosses, especially after their buffs. As I said in yesterday's video, what I'm doing is I am trying to uh, approach these bosses in a more defensive manner, meaning that I'm not killing myself here trying to, you know, stack up a bunch of cold hearts and royal guards anymore, especially after they were nerfed against bosses. They called it a boss buff, but in reality, it was a uh, damage based on max HP nerf. Uh, another way to say the same thing, I guess, semantics at the end of the day. But here we go. Things get a little bit dicey in the beginning here, but I don't think... Anybody should die on this team. Look at all these poisons. Again, as soon as we get in timely intervention, I should say, uh, really going to help you out a lot here. The more I think about it on the masteries, you know, unless you're absolutely killing it in terms of uh, in terms of you're always staying alive and you're good. I think timely intervention would really help her out quite a bit here. She would be getting that turn meter boost in situations like probably around now. Draconis comes in with his shield. That's going to help the team out tremendously. She did land her decrease attack on that A1 there as well. So nice to have that. Uh, Grizzled Jarl does have one as well. Uh, Grizzled Jarl has a block debuffs buff in his kit. However, keep in mind against the spider, you cannot, it's immune. These poisons and poison sensitivity are immune to block debuffs. But what we're going to do, we finally landed the heal reduction there from Grizzled with Jarl, and now again, we're going to remove all those debuffs, replace them with continuous heals, and what I'm going to do, guys, is cut here probably, and I'll come back to you guys when this match is over. It's going to take a while, but we are going to get the job done. I have faith. Relic Retender's HP, by the way, does get kind of low, and that's why the leech comes in so handy. She's going to go ahead and get that attack on, and boom, the shield comes on, but that attack, her A1, is enough to proc that leech and heal herself up so she can get to her next A2 and again remove debuffs and look at look at how much HP look at how much HP she gained just off of the leech very, very solid. So guys, I will be right back at the end of this battle. All right, guys. So as I said, it was not the fastest run ever. We're here above eight minutes, but we are getting the job done. In fact, nobody has died this entire battle. Relic Tender, funny enough, is the one who keeps getting the lowest on the HP, but she keeps healing herself up thanks to the cleanse and thanks to the leech and, of course, Draconis coming through with the shield as well. So there it is, guys. Kale, of course, putting out 2.7 million damage. Uh, great to have those poisons against the Nether Spider. Relic Retender putting out 1.1 million just in mainly Warmaster. And Grush putting out 1.6. Draconis 775. Grizzled Jarl 762. But more importantly, look at all those heals from Relic Retender. 1.1 uh, million in total heals. Uh, actually, some of that came from the Leech as well, so that should be mentioned. But either way, guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this guide of Relic Retender. One of my favorite champions inside the entire game definitely a champion worth investing in uh, really second to none in terms of a rare support champion inside the game thank you for watching and as always take care guys